In this video, we're going to take a look at solving logic puzzles, which is absolutely an application of propositional logic. For our logic puzzles, we're going to start out with sort of a well-known or a type of question that you'll see quite often in lots of different iterations. This has to do with knights and knaves. And knights always tell the truth and knaves always lie. So this is one example of a knight and knave problem, but if you search the internet, you can find a bunch of different combinations of knights and knaves, and sometimes they even throw in some extras just for fun. So in our question, it says we go, we go to the island and we meet A and B. So we've got person A and person B. A says B is a knight. B says the two of us are of opposite types. What are A and B? So we're going to let P represent A is a knight. And we're going to let Q represent B is a knight. Oops. So there's a lot of different ways to go about this. And again, there's no one correct way to go about this, but there is one correct answer. But to kind of get us started and to make sure that we're staying organized, we really have four possibilities. We either have P is Q and Q is true. We have P is true and not Q. We have not P and Q or we have not P and not Q. So here's my options. And again, we're thinking about this in terms of knights and knaves. So let's just reason through it. And I'm gonna show you an example in a second where we can do this with sort of a modified truth table, but let's just use our reasoning. Here we have that, let's, let's start by assuming this is true. Uh, we go to the island, we meet A and B. A says B is a knight. So if A says B is a knight and we're saying P is true, so we're saying A is a knight. And A says that B is a knight. Okay, so that works out okay for A's statement. B says the two of us are of opposite types. So are P and Q of opposite types? No, because we're saying right now that A said that B is a knight, but if B is telling the truth and they're of opposite types, then this logically doesn't work because B can't be a knight and be telling the truth about A and B being different. So it doesn't work. This next one says A is a knight and not Q would say B is a knave. So our first statement says A is an, or B is a knight. So A is a knight and telling the truth and telling us that B is a knight, but we know from here we're saying B is a knave, so this one doesn't work. It's faulty logic. So we're down to two options. This one says A is a knave and therefore is lying, right? And B is a knight. So let's see if this one could work. A says B is a knight. So A is a knave and says B is a knight, but A has to be lying. And if A is lying, then that means B must be a knave. So this one doesn't work. So clearly by elimination, this is our solution, but let's take a look. This one says A is a knave and therefore lies and not Q means B is not a knight or B is a knave. And now let's make sure the logic holds. A says B is a knight, okay, and is lying because he's a knave and lies and therefore his works out okay. B says the two of us are of opposite types, which would mean he would have to be a knight, except that he's lying. And so that means he's saying there were the same type. So his statement holds true as well. So our only solution is that both A and B are knaves. 
Here's another way that we can go about solving this, and this is using a truth table. And we should be familiar with truth tables to this point, but remember on a truth table, the very far left side is just going to be our possibilities. So we're using P, the A is a knight, Q, that B is a knight. And so we can have the possibilities of true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. Those are all our possibilities. Now, when we're doing a truth table like this, essentially what I'm looking for is I want whatever happens in this set of columns to match up whatever happens in this set of columns. And if that's the case, then they are equivalent and therefore everything's okay. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. Let's just start working through this together and hopefully if there's any confusion, I can clear it up as we go through. When I'm going through this, for my first statement, I'm assuming that the P is exactly as P is in my combination. So I'm gonna do true, true, false, false. And for B says two are of opposite types, I'm going to assume that Q is whatever Q is over here. So I've just recopied P and recopied Q. And then I'm going to evaluate Q here based on P, and I'm going to value at P here based on whatever Q says. And then hopefully we can find something where everything matches up and works out. So let's get started. If A says B is a knight, and that's what we're saying here, that P is true. So P is a knight, and A says that B is a knight, therefore B, or A is telling the truth, and B must be a knight. And therefore, this one's okay, because we see true, true, which matches with true, true. So if we get a true here, then we know that we're correct. So let's take a look. B says the two are of opposite types. So if Q is true, he's a knight, then the knight is saying the two are of opposite types, and that tells me that P must be a knave or that P is false. So notice this does not match up, and therefore this is not a possibility. So let's continue that same method. Again, I've already filled in the true for P. So I'm saying A says B is a knight. A is a knight based on this statement right here and telling the truth, and therefore this must be true. But we know that it can't be true, and therefore I'm not even going to check anymore because that one is not going to work. Let's try again. I have false true. So A says B is a knight, but A is a knave and therefore is lying. So if this one is false, then this one, because he's lying, must be false. And again, that doesn't match up and I don't have to continue. We already know that this is the answer because we just did this question, but let's go ahead and check it. A says B is a knight, but A is a knave and so he's telling a lie. Therefore, it must be that Q is false. Let's try this one. We have B says the two are of opposite types, but he's a knave and therefore lying. And so this must also be false. So notice this is the one that matches up. So just as we did it before without a truth table, we came to the same conclusion. This is just a way for us to come up with the same solution using a truth table. So let's take a look at another logic puzzle. We are planning a party and we have some very sensitive, touchy friends who don't want to be there if other people are there. And so as you can see, I've already started this um, truth table for you. And I didn't use true falses this time. Um, what I did was kind of like what I did on that last one where I just did not P's and not Q's, but I'm using J, S, and K to represent Jasmine, Samir, and Conti, our three very touchy friends. So the first thing I did was I looked at the sentences in the question. And this one says, if Jasmine attends, she will become unhappy if Samir is there. 
I translated that to be, if Jasmine is there, then that implies Samir was not there. The second one was, Samir will only attend if Chianti will be there. So I'm saying Samir implies that Chianti was there. I'm sorry, not Kanti, not Chianti, which is alcohol. And then of course, let's pick a different color. Blue, we says we say Kanti will not attend unless Jasmine also does. So Kanti implies that Jasmine was there. From here, the next thing I did was I took anything that was not on the implication side. So here I'm going to leave the S column alone so that I can fill that in in a minute. I'm going to use the K column and fill that in in a minute. And I'm going to use the J column and fill that in in a minute. And I'm just going to copy over everything else. So notice the ones that I've put the arrows on, those are blank. So let's talk about where those solutions will come from. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let, take a look at the J value. And if J is true, then I'm going to write not S. So I'm going to write not S here not s here, not s here, not s here. If j is false, so if it's not j, then I'm just going to fill in whatever was over here. Because remember, in an implication, if that first part is false, then it doesn't say anything about the second part. So that's where I'm going to come up with those values. Now, from here, I really can start to take things off of my possibilities. I need for everything in this row to be J, S, K, and already I don't have that here because I have J, not S, K. So I'm going to cross that off. And I'm going to cross this one off as well for the exact same reason. And J, not S, K, that one works out okay. J, not S, not K, that one works out okay. Um, not J, S, K is okay. The that sixth row is okay, the seventh row is okay, the eighth row is okay. So, so far, I've taken off um, everything in the first two. So, I'm going to get rid of this and just so that it's a little bit nicer writing. So, again, we've crossed these off. Now, let's take a look at the next one. So, S implies K. Again, that means if S is true, then K is going to be true. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in these. And then if not S is true, then we're just going to write whatever was here already in the case. So again, I'm going to just uncover those to make it a little bit easier. And I think that's just going to keep happening. So I'm just going to keep this crossed off and this crossed off. And so now again, I'm going to compare the original row, J not SK, and if I get something besides J not SK, then I'm going to cross it off. So J not SK, that matches up. J not S not K, that matches up. Not J SK, that matches. Not J S not K does not match. So this one's gone. Not S not not J, not S, K, that one's okay. And not J, not S, not K, that one's all right. So now we're down to five possibilities. And then we're going to do our last one again, following that same method. I'm going to say K implies J. So if K is true, that gives me a J, a J, a J, a J. And the rest of them will be whatever happened um, in the original. So that would be J here. J here, not J, not J. And then again, we're just going to compare. So we're going to compare J, not SK. And notice everything in this row is J, not SK. And then we're going to look at, I'm going to try to get rid of some of those chicken scratches. And then I've got J not S not K, J not S not K, J not S not K, J not S not K. There's another possibility. I've got not as not J S K, which doesn't hold true over here because I've got a J and not a not J. We already took off this one. 
And we've got not J, not SK. And that one doesn't work uh, because this one should be a not J. So this one's gone. And then that very last row, I've got not everything, which is OK. So here's what this boils down to. We had three where everything was the same all across the row. So let's just use a different color there to maybe highlight that. That would be here. Yes, please do make the sound effects with it. These were the ones that worked out for us. So what does that tell us? Who can we invite? We can invite J, not SK. That means invite Jasmine. Don't invite Samir, but invite Conti. Or we can invite Jasmine and not Samir and not Conti. Or we can just say, y'all need to grow up and don't invite any of them. Those, based on what we've given in the question, those are our possibilities. Up next, we're going to take a look at some logic circuits, which is basically a way to look at a propositional statement and to write it um, in a diagram.